Welcome back Pioneers, we're back in the Factory Blueprint series. Today we kick off refineries with part 1 of 2. This video will go over the basic, beginner friendly design that fits nicely inside a Mark 1 designer and can be easily tiled. While these can be stacked, we'll focus on an easy design today. In our next video, we'll use the Mark 2 designer to create vertically stackable refinery designs. If you want to see those, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I'll also be showing some quick fluid tower blueprints. As always, all of the blueprints will be available for download from either the Google Drive or the recently launched Discord server. Links are in the description. Awesome shop purchases are the wall outlets, ladders if you want them, pillars, and the structural frame pack, but as always, these are optional. We'll set up the left side input first. To start, place a refinery slid to the left side of the designer, line up the item input with the first grid line, and make sure it is centered in the other direction. We are going to take advantage of the empty space below the refinery to run our belts, and we'll keep the pipes on the outside. There will be some clipping through some posts. We'll first place a splitter for the input, align it in the middle of the space, and rotate it so the input for the splitter is coming from under the refinery. Place and connect the splitter to the refinery input with Mark IV belts. Now place a merger in line with the splitter, again aligned in the middle of the space. This is where we'll clip through the posts. Place and connect the merger to the refinery output with Mark IV belts. Place a pipe junction in front of the fluid output and connect it to the refinery with a Mark I pipe. We will repeat the same thing for the input, place a junction, and connect with a Mark I pipe. Next, build up eight 4 meter foundations. We'll use this to build the floor and the ceiling. Starting with the floor, go to the first foundation and build a 2 by 4 floor. Then go to the top and build a 2 by 4 ceiling. Add an outlet on the input side. The wire should be completely hidden. I'll then extend it to the edge for easier access. We can save this as 1x refinery left. If you want to set up a right side input, first delete the splitter and belt. Rotate the splitter so the input is now facing away from the refinery. Place and reconnect the splitter to the refinery. Then remove the merger and the belt. We will rotate it so the output is facing the refinery. And again, connect the merger to the refinery with a Mark IV belt. We can now save this as 1x refinery to the right. Now load up the 1x refinery left and place another 1x refinery left next to it. First connect power, then the input pipes, then we can go into the middle and connect the belts. You can see this is where the clipping happens, but it's underneath the floor, so I doubt we'll notice it. And then the last thing we can do is connect the output pipe. So with that all done, you can save that as 2x refinery left. And we'll do the same thing for the right. Load up the 1x refinery to the right. Place another one next to it. You can use H to lock it in place. And again, start from the outside, connect power. We'll connect the pipes together. Belts, and then the output pipe. If you are enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like to let me know. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future designs. We can now save this as the 2x refinery to the right. Now, really fast, I have some easy fluid tower blueprints. 
So to start, build up four frame pillars. I'm going to place a small fluid buffer on top. And then we're going to make some quick connections with, again, a Mark I pipe. And for this, I find that horizontal vertical mode seems to give the best result. So we can go ahead and save this as fluid tower top, small. And to make the large, build two frame foundations or whatever foundations you prefer. Get the industrial fluid buffer. You can use H to enable building and lock it in place, place it down. And then again, we're gonna connect two Mark I pipes. This time, use the auto mode for the best result. You can save this as fluid tower top large. And then I also like to set up a basic four by four, four meter foundation. This just makes building easier. And I'm also gonna make a really simple concrete pillar that is the same height as all of our builds. So this is the demo build I set up for us. It's a basic oil production facility. So we can start out below. As we can see, I've overclocked two impure nodes. So we've got 150 out of one. Hey guys. And 150 out of the other. And this is giving us a total of 300 which we are then sending into our first fluid tower. So you can see our Mark I pumps working nicely. We needed two, so not too bad. And we have a very small buffer, which is fine. We just need a little one. It's more important that the pipes going into the machines are full and the machines themselves. So we can see we are nice and full. Everything is outputting quickly. And we'll work our way through and just check a couple of these. You can see everything is working at 100% and all the items are going straight up. And even down here on the end, it's fully full and fills up very quickly. So the heavy oil residue gets funneled into the middle and pumped into a small buffer here. And again, you can see, have a nice little bit. We send the rubber and the plastic into some simple chests for a demo. I do have an overflow set up just to make sure everything keeps running. You can see it's not enabled yet. There's plastic filling up very nicely as well. And again, simple overflow to ensure that the facility does not shut down. So now the heavy oil residue, we turn that into fuel using the basic recipe. So we have three refineries set up, two of them at 100%, and the last one we have underclocked to produce 20. So this consumes the perfect amount of heavy oil residue for us. We then, of course, pump that fuel into another small buffer. We then send that fuel into two fully overclocked generators, which give us a total of 1,250 megawatts. And that gives us a net output of about 600. So all in, we're getting 100 plastic, 100 rubber, and about 600 megawatts net positive power. So again, the awesome sink isn't on, and that's where that extra 30 megawatts of power can come from. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, or both to let me know. Blueprints are available from the links in the description. Again, if you're new, please subscribe so you don't miss out the next fifth installment where we go vertical. If you want to see more videos like this, this is part of a series on my channel going over blueprint designs for every machine. So be sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.